Well, there are many uh, Asian countries that are rising. <laughs> But I guess the two biggest ones who are, in a sense, changing the course of world history are China and India. And clearly, in some ways, you can call it the rise of China and India. More accurately, you should call it the return of China and India because from the year one to the year 1820, the two largest economies in the world were consistently China and India. And then only in the last 200 years, first Europe took off and then North America took off. So what you're going to see in the 21st century is a return to the norm where China and India always had and will, and will now continue to have the world's largest economies. In response to this return or rise of Asia, in trying to understand why Asia is rising now, in my new book called The New Asian Hemisphere, I tried to pin down what I call the seven pillars of Western wisdom that the Asian countries have finally uh, understood, absorbed, and implemented uh, in their societies. It's the pillars of wisdom, Western wisdom are things like free market economics, mastery of science and technology, uh, a culture of uh, pragmatism, meritocracy, uh, culture of peace, rule of law, education, and it's clear that essentially the, the one fundamental reason why the Asian societies are succeeding and doing well is they have figured out why the West succeeded. And they're now out to replicate uh, the success of the West in Asia. But of course in Asia it's happening at a much faster pace. In, in, in the Western Industrial Revolution, when you saw an improvement in living standards in one lifetime, you saw an improvement of about 50%. In Asia, you're seeing an improvement in standards in one lifetime, not of 50%, not 100%, not 200%, but 10,000%. Now, this is the fastest ever economic growth seen in history, and it's happening in Asia. Oh, there are many, many other countries. Uh, certainly, you, you already had, as you know, before China and India came along, you had Japan and the Four Tigers, Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. Now, of course, you have new states like Vietnam uh, is emerging as a new uh, economic tiger. But more importantly, you're also getting uh, a great degree of cooperation among the Asian states. More and more free trade agreements are being established. And the establishment of these free trade agreements mean that the fastest growing trade flows in the world are in Asia. And this enables all, the rising tide in Asia is lifting many boats. One of the, the big challenges that they're facing is of course, they're running into resource constraints, right? You know, you, they need more energy, uh, they need more resources, and the world, we've discovered, doesn't have an infinite supply of resources. The second challenge they're facing is, of course, uh, on the environmental front. Uh, in the 19th century, when the Europeans built uh, steel mills, they could throw out as much smoke in the air as they wanted to and not have to worry about global warming. Now China and India also have to worry about global warming and be part of the solution, too. And then, of course, domestically, they have uh, problems of uh, inequality that are rising. And in the case of China, of course, you have, to, you have the concern about how will they reform their political system. I mean, I think they'll succeed in doing it, but that's the challenge that they face. I mean, so the Asian states have not arrived yet. They still have many, many more challenges that they face. I think certainly uh, the current financial crisis in the year 2008 will lead to slower growth in China and India and elsewhere. I mean, China's growth will not be 11% this year, maybe 9%. India's growth will not be 9%, maybe 7%. Singapore's growth has also gone down. But I think while this will lead to a slowdown in Asia's rise, it will not reverse. Uh, Asia's rise. Asia will continue to grow uh, and develop uh, and do very well indeed. Yeah. Well, I think they, here that's actually a big historical mystery, you know. 
because you know if you look back at the beginning of the 20th century after Europe succeeded and after the United States succeeded the next big continent to succeed should have been Latin America in fact Argentina as you know had one of the the uh, sixth uh, six largest economy in the world in the year 1900. And so the big mystery is why did Latin America succeed and why did Asia succeed? And uh, this is of course a very complex story but one reason why Asian societies are succeeding is because of what I call an explosion of cultural confidence. Uh, you know, the, it was initially the success of Japan in the Meiji Reformation, again after World War II, that led to the Four Tigers, Korea, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore succeeding. Bec essentially what happened was that the Koreans and the Taiwanese and Singaporeans said, Japan can succeed, why not us? And then when the Four Tigers succeeded, the ASEAN states, why not us? And then China, when Deng Xiaoping came to Singapore and was amazed to discover how much uh, advanced Singapore was compared to China, he said, China must change, we must succeed too. So there's a process of learning from each other that has led to an increase in cultural confidence. And the only way you can develop is when you actually believe that you can develop. And today, many young Asians believe that tomorrow belongs to them.